Robots, why do they capture our imagination like they do? What is it about these autonomous apparatus that make us so giddy, fill us with wonder, and all kinds of great, amazing feelings? Well, we're going to talk about that today on The First Layer. Hey, welcome back to The First Layer. My name's Richard. I'm your host here every Wednesday, and we are back to doing our shows for Wednesday. Today, we're talking about robots. And why are we talking about robots? What does that have to do with 3D printing? Well, surprisingly enough, it has a lot to do with 3D printing, but I want to talk about robots in general for a moment, and then we're going to get to the project that, that we're going to be talking about. Robots, I've been fascinated by robots ever since... I saw Star Wars in 1977. Actually, it even goes back before that, when I saw the B-9 robot on Lost in Space. Yes, I'm that old. Um, and then I looked for other robots I thought were cool. The robot from Metropolis, uh, Fritz Lang's silent movie. Um, I also was very taken by Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. Then the little robots from Silent Running, uh, Bob from uh what is that movie now it's escaping me the black hole just like my brain it's a black hole and <laughs> there's all kinds of robots out there and i gotta tell you they all sparked my imagination as a kid and how could i one day own my own robot well as it is i do own my own robot i own actually a couple of robots and we can see them here we have our robot from our good friends over at Easy Robot. This is the JD uh, humanoid robot. We have R2-D2 uh, or a R2 droid. This one is actually from the uh, Disney uh, park and uh, out at uh, Anaheim. Uh, Brian Baker brought this back for me now, I guess it was about two years ago. Um, really love this droid. I play with him off and on. I am not great at maneuvering him, um, but uh, I will get better. But what does this signify for me? Well, this brings us down to this little guy in the front. And the little guy here in the front, his name is Makey. And if you have ever been around Maker Faire, Makey is a robot that you build all on your own. And Makey is uh, a very interesting robot, to say the least. He has uh, his arms move, his eyes light up, his head moves, his legs move. However, I'm not that far yet. I haven't programmed him to do that stuff yet. I'm still working on that. But what we're going to do over the next few episodes, or in a series of episodes, because we've got a lot of things we're going to intercut, um, is we're going to show you uh, how we went about making Makey. Now, Makey is something that I did not design. This was designed uh, by the uh, inventor of the Otto ro DIY robot. That's O-T-T-O-D-I-Y. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to go check it out for yourself. It uses very low-cost hardware. A 3D printer is all you need. Even if you don't have a 3D printer, you can buy complete kits. Now, why is this important? Well, Makey as a robot and a starting robot to get you into robotics is uh, a great way to jump off and get into it. Now, we with JD over here, he's a little bit more advanced. Um, he uses a little bit different servos. He uses his own controller board. He has a lot of proprietary things going on with him. But we are at some point going to turn Makey into a much larger version of himself using uh, the same type of architecture that goes into making JD. So we can make him even smarter. So that's going to be something that we're going to do. But first, let's get back and just talk quickly about Makey. So with Makey, we have got a 3D printed shell. Makey shell is not commercially available, but there is a link down below. And uh, if you go over to the website, you're going to see a lot of different robots from the auto DIY robot site. And I'm going to pull it up for you. All right. So here we have the auto DIY robot. 
Um, I can't pronounce the, the maker's name or the designer's name. It is a name that just kind of escapes me. But uh, I will tell you what this is. This is your first step into robotics, and it is really very cool. Um, you can download instruction manuals. You can uh, end 3D files. You can also download the software, which is based on... Um, a simple coding called Blockly. Now, this particular Blockly that you would download from their website, very easy to do. And they also have Design Your Robot from Scratch. So you can design your own robot, uh, which is very, very cool. Now, this is autodiy.com, and you can, there's games that you can play with auto. Uh, you can see that there are some different auto kits. The Auto Plus kit is the one that uh, we've kind of based our our robot on um, using all of the things that they used. Uh, then you've got the Emotions kit. Then you've got an Auto Key. Um, and then you've got the Ninja kit. And then you've got a Humanoid kit, Ninja Humanoid kit. So they're, they're all there and available for you uh, to download and have a look at. You can see here, Auto, there's over... 50,000 autos on earth and there's a map that shows you where they all are there's 80 communities or countries pardon me um, with communities over 80 communities and there's so much more to this and it is important that if you are wanting to get into robotics and especially if you want to introduce your kids to robotics which I am a huge fan of doing um, this is part of the STEM program. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. What does the A stand for? And, and I got to tell you, STEM should really have an A in it and actually be called STEAM because the A should be for art. And um, Adam Savage uh, made that claim quite a while ago. He thought that they should add A to stem and make it steam because art is a very big part of this whole process i've said this many times before and many times in the past that our programs today in our schools um, have gotten away from that hands-on kind of learning that we did when we were in shop class or in drafting class or in you know even art class a lot of those programs have gone by the wayside and if they haven't they will soon be uh, in favor of other programs. And I've talked to several teacher friends of mine, and they all agree with me that this is something that should be a part of curriculum. Learning about electronics, getting your hands dirty, talking, learning about building cars, working with wood, uh, drafting, photography, graphic arts, all that kind of stuff should all be involved uh, in education still, as well as learning home economics. Um, learning how to cook for yourself. So we're not always going out and buying uh, prepackaged food. Uh, I know this is starting to sound a bit like a rant, but at the end of the day, it really isn't. This is something I feel very strongly about. But STEM, um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is a great program. I'm glad that it's out there. I'm glad that there are, are private institutions that are making STEM available to schools and really giving kids uh, a chance to learn brand new skills that are going to help them in life. So why did I choose a robot to build as a 3D printing project? Well, I've always been fascinated by robots, as I said at the top of the show, and I've always wanted to own my own robot. And this is the first step to getting to understand how robots work, how uh, programs work like Blockly. Oops, yeah, see, you can hear it circles going. Don't grab him by the foot, by the way. Um, inside uh, him, there is actually some pretty simple electronics. Inside, we have uh, an Arduino Nano plus a shield that the Nano sits in that you don't have to do any soldering for. It already comes ready to go. You just drop your Nano on there, boop and you start programming them. Um, you're gonna need uh, seven servos, two LEDs for the eyes, a couple of resistors. Um, you can add 
uh, batteries to him. You can add a battery pack to him, or you can go ahead and add uh, just a, a wire if you want to have them tethered so that you can constantly be programming them and playing with them. Um, there is other things that you can add, and the breakout board for the Arduino Nano has the ability to add Bluetooth, so you can control them from your phone. You can write your own app. There's a lot of things that you can do with Makey the Dancing Robot. Now, why did I choose a dancing robot? Well, first and foremost is because Makey is, well, he's cute, for one. And two, he represents the maker in all of us. Whether we are woodworkers, plastic workers, metal workers, uh, fabric workers, it doesn't matter. He represents making in general. And he is the mascot for Maker Fair. As many of you know, um, the auto DIY robot and the website that we were just showing has all the information that you need about making one of these. But I'm going to try and make it easy for you. We're going to go through it step by step. In the next episode, we're going to break down the 3D printing portion of it. All of the files for all of the auto robots are freely available. They're open source. This is a completely open source project. Um, if you make one, please go and join their Facebook page. I'm going to leave links to everything down in the description below so that you can go ahead and find all the products that you want. Um, it's very easy to get up and running with, with uh, the auto DIY robots. Um, you can make some really cute ones too. I mean, it, your imagination is only limited by you uh, and your ability to design pieces. Now, for all of the auto robots, as I mentioned earlier, they're all freely available for you online. You can buy kits as well if you don't have a 3D printer. Uh, you don't have a friend or access to a 3D printer. You can go ahead and um, download a kit that has all of the parts available that are 3D printed. You just basically put it together, start programming. You're up and running in just a couple of hours. Uh, in the case of, of this guy, he's printed in red PLA or Yes, red PLA and white PLA. These are both colors from our friends over at filaments.ca. I want to mention that filaments.ca is your number one source for filaments in Canada. They have exclusive filaments uh, that are only uh, uh, granted to them so that they can sell in Canada. Um, and they also have their own line of EcoTuff as well as Econofills, PLAs, ABS, PETG, and a variety of others. We're going to be going into talking a lot more about filaments.ca filaments in the very future. And we want to thank them for being a sponsor of the first layer. Um, now, Makey himself, you're not going to see him run today, but uh, this is kind of an introduction into what we're going to get into. In the next episode, we're going to break down all the parts. We're going to show you the 3D printing of Makey. And uh, we're going to uh, start our build and we'll show you how to program them and all kinds of great things. I have enough servos left over that I can do another one of these guys. And uh, then we're going to uh, go ahead and build a third one using parts from our good friends over at Easy Robot. Now, Easy Robot is a Canadian owned company. Um, they have, I've been friends with those guys for quite some time. And I got to tell you the easy robot, you're going to see him working, uh, in the very near future as well. And we are going to take, uh, parts and use the architecture of easy of JD here and make him into a much bigger and better version of, of the, uh, MakerBot robot. We're going to set JD down there and. I, why do I want to have an army of robots? Well, really, I don't. I've always wanted to work my way up to having a full-size version of this guy. Um, an R2 unit. I fell in love with R2-D2 back in 1977 um, during uh, Star Wars when it came out. I got to see it opening night at the King's Theater in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, here in Canada, my mother took me. I was 12 years old. I was uh, in Winnipeg having surgery done, cosmetic surgery. Yes, I know, they didn't fix my face. Um, but they did fix my ears. When I was a kid, I had such dumbo ears, but I'm getting off track. Um, if I got, if there was good wind, I got left off the ground. But um, in any case, uh, I've always wanted to own my own full-size droid. And as I get there, there are great makers out there, Mr. Baddeley. Um, who has created files for 3D printing uh, to make yourself a full-size 
working R2 unit. Um, those files are available. I believe you just have to join his Patreon to get the most current files. Uh, there's also another great guy that, that we love here at the show, and uh, that is Sam Prentice, the real Sam Prentice online. He does a ton of robot builds. Um, if you're looking for more inspiration, there's guys like James Britton out in the UK as well. Uh, and James is, is always making robots. If you know, if you know anything about James, you'll know he's 3d printing like crazy and he's always making robots. Um, and I just watched a video with him this morning where he made, uh, a robot or a voice controlled cart driving cart, which was kind of neat, um, using 3d printing, some welding and, and things like that. But robots are what we are going to be tackling in this episode and in future episodes we are also going to be taking some of your suggestions and showing you a little bit more about making uh, where we incorporate 3d printing into some other projects that will utilize laser engraving laser cutting milling on a desktop mill again we're going to be talking about electronics because there are electronics that go into doing this and one of the things that i am totally stoked about and we talked about it on our last live stream is we are going to build a 3d printer from our junk drawer and what does that mean well um that means that i have tons of parts sitting around this house in various boxes and places and there's some here in the studio um and i thought why not take all of that stuff that i have left over and show you how you can build a 3D printer basically out of stuff you have left over. So the challenge is going to be not to buy anything new. That means I'm not buying any boards. I'm not buying any extrusion. I may have to buy belt because I, I don't know if I have any belts. Um, that's the one thing I'm always short of is belt material, but we'll get there. We have sprockets, we have uh, all kinds of things. We've got motors, we've got wires. Even if we have to make up the wire looms ourselves, we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to show you, take it right from all the parts. We're going to lay them all out and we're going to take it right through to conclusion where we actually print something with it and show you how to tune it. And uh, everything that we are putting into this is all stuff that we have right here uh, in house. So I'm not going out and spending any money unless I need some belts. That's the only caveat. I may need some belt material. But other than that, that's all we're going to do. And uh, I hope that you're going to be along for the journey. And I hope to see you guys again this Saturday or this Sunday on our live stream, which is 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time every Sunday. Um, I will be there answering your questions this week on today's show, uh, as well as I'll be answering your questions about our brand new um, affiliate, which as I mentioned is filaments.ca. Filaments.ca is a great company. They have a lot of great filaments. Um, Makey here was, was made from uh, Econofill Red and White and we are going to be using their filaments to do a number of projects uh, in the upcoming months uh, taking us through to the end of the year i hope to have uh, some of these bigger projects done by the end of the year um, we're going to build a soldering station we've got all kinds of things that we want to do on the show this year in the la in this last six months of the year or last half of the year and i hope that you're going to come along for the ride also you can find me every second friday over on the filaments.ca channel um, i actually am an employee now of filaments.ca for those of you that don't know and that's why they sponsor this show uh, and I will be talking about their products. I'll be teaching you how to use their products and how to get the best results from their products. Uh, coming up this Friday is part one of our look at bed adhesion and what commercial available options are there for you and how to use them. So join me on Friday over at filaments.ca's YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below as well. So until I see you guys, I know there wasn't a lot to, to do and actually teach you this week, but it is really our my first episode back after uh, quite a hiatus. And uh, I really wanted to kind of bring you up to speed. Um, there's still some changes going on here in the studio. We're going to change some things up just a little bit. 
and I hope again that you'll come along for the ride and tell your friends about the channel if you're not subscribed already please hit that subscribe button ding the little bell so you get notified every time that a brand new episode goes up and I will see you on the other side remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print